Okay, we're going to find the volume generated by taking the region, bounded by this and that, and rotate it about x is equal to 1. So, here we go. Let's have a picture first. As we can see, y is equal to 4x minus x squared. This is going to give us an upside-down parabola. And let's put 0 to be y first, so we can find out the x-intercepts. So, let's factor out the x. We'll see we get x equals 0, and the other one is x equals 4. Have a look. Here and here, this right here is going to tell us the x-intercepts, and then the parabola opens upside down, so it will look like this. However, we are not taking this region and do the rotation, because right here it says y is equal to 3. So, let me just say this right here is when y is equal to 3, so I have, a, you know, I have to make a cut right here and here. So, this is actually the region that we are talking about. However, we also need to find out the x coordinates here and here, right? To do that, you put 3 into the y, so we get 3. It's equal to 4x minus x squared. Move this and that to the other side, we get x squared minus 4x plus 3. It's equal to 0. Man, don't you guys miss the good old days? This is all you have to do for the whole question, and then you can be getting an A already. <laughs> anyway, x is equal to 1, x is equal to 3. So that will be our x coordinates. And these are very important, right? Next, have a look. We are going to rotate the region about x is equal to 1. And that happens to be right here. So let me just put down the dashed line like this. And we'll do the rotation right here. So have a look with the picture. I'm going to, of course, just pretty much copy this down here. And I'll do the mirror image. But this point and the x is equal to 1 touch each other, so the mirror image will look like this, right? And then this right here is when x is equal to 1. That's our vertical line. And a little bit to the left, this right here is my y-axis, and then I still have my x-axis right here. And as usual, on the top, let me just do like oval, and likewise on the bottom, we can somehow do that and then fix it a little bit so it looks like three-dimensional. Anyway, this right here is the solid. Now, you can try to use the disk method, and of course you have to do the big one minus the small one, and you actually, that's called the washer method. But don't do that, because in order to do so, you have to find out the expression x in terms of y. It will take some time. You, it's doable though, you can try to do it. But here we'll do the shell method. What we do is, we are going to draw a vertical rectangle right here, and then just kind of rotate it, and we can generate the shell. So I will do the mirror image right here. And again, be really careful with this, right? So here is the shell that uh, we have. Now, this is when... Yeah, okay. So now, here we go. Have a look. This right here is the thickness of the shell, which is dx, right? Measure it by dx because that's just a small change in the x values. And then the height is from here to here. Well, the top is our y, and then right here is when y is equal to 3. Remember, let's just look at this. On the top is y, and let me just put on t. That's the y on the top, which is that, 4x minus x squared. And then this right here, it's actually a y on the bottom, which is just 3, okay? So, in fact, from here to here is just the y on the top minus y on the bottom, which is going to be 4x minus x squared and then minus 3, right? So be really careful with this part. So that's going to give us the height. And then we also have to find out the radius, which is from the center to here. Right? And again, this is meant to be my x is equal to 1. My picture is not perfect. I'm sorry. But now, have a look. Originally, when you have this right here, and I'm looking at the right-hand side because originally I have the picture on the right-hand side. This part is just the mirror image so that we can have the 3D look. Right? So, this right here is x. And I have to go to here only. Originally, from here to here is x, but I want to stop right here. The x on the right is x, and then the x on the left is 1. So this portion, and let me just indicate this by blue from here to here, 
This right here is actually just x minus 1. Again, originally from here to here is x, but you have to subtract the 1 because you don't have this portion. So in fact, this right here is the radius. So now we can put things down nicely. Again, the volume is equal to 2 pi times the radius, which is again x minus 1. So let me just put that down. And then we multiply by the height, which is this expression. I will just write it down as how it is. We have the 4x minus x squared and then minus 3. I'm not going to um, you know, rearrange it whatsoever. I think this is more clear. And then in the end, multiply by dx. And because we're in the x world, we have to integrate it from 1 to 3. Right? Do not look at the left hand side. This again is just to help us see how the 3D looks like, but you always refer back to the original equations and also the boundaries. It goes from 1 to 3. Like that. So this right here is going to calculate the volume for us for that thing. Okay? So we have two subtractions going on, one for the radius and one for the height. Be really careful with this example right here. Okay?